We had a good day today. Are we doing the Barbara Walters walk and talk? That's our goal, yeah. All right, yeah. I didn't bring my stilts. <laughs> All right, so the regular season's almost here. Yep. Obviously, big expectations. How good is this team? How good do you guys think you can be? Because on paper, I've covered the team for a long time. I've never seen a roster like this one, top to bottom. The defensive line, I think, is too deep. It seems like everywhere in yeah. camp. Wide receivers, we're looking at the rookies behind the big three. Yeah. Like, offensive line, I think it's as good as it's been. How, how good can y'all be? Well, I think we look really good on paper, and I think we've had a lot of a good training camp. Um, I mean, our goal is to win the championship. I think we need to, you know, there, we got to temper that talk as we get into the regular season because there's a lot of football to be played. And we're going to Cleveland week one, and, and we need to win there, you know. But I think we can be, you know, top of the league and ultimately end with a win. That's our ultimate goal. When you got here 18 months ago, did you feel the offensive line thirst in this town? If that makes sense. Well, it was serving a need. I mean, I certainly, yeah, they were, yeah, it was, uh, you know, one of those things, opportunity presented itself. I jumped yeah. all over it. It didn't take me long to commit. I think I committed in like 15 minutes. So, yeah. Yeah. You and Cap Kappa was one minute yeah. after the legal tamper and you were I was like, like 45. Probably. Yeah. But something they, they like had that. Called. We hadn't, didn't have much contact with Cincinnati. So I didn't know. I was hoping, um, you know, to have as many options as I could, but that was, it was, I had to, you know, call their people. They were asking for more time. I said, no, I'm done <laughs> going to Cincy. You've played with Tom Brady, obviously. Now you're playing with Joe Burrow. Yeah. What was your first impression of Joe Burrow meeting him, maybe interacting with him the first extended time you did? Do you remember? I think he lives up to his nickname, Joe Cool. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, no, he's unbelievable. It's really – it's interesting, the perspective of playing with Tom. He's just superstar, but 45. Mm -hmm. And now I'm playing with a superstar. He's 26 now, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joe's in the mix with all of us. It really lends to the culture. I mean, he's the culture driver of our team. He's our unquestioned leader, and he's a killer. He doesn't talk much, like, publicly. He's not a loud guy. I don't think he's a rah-rah guy, I guess is how I should be. Yeah. Not that he doesn't talk. Of course he communicates. How does he lead? How is he the, the, the voice or the heartbeat of the locker room or whatever you want to say, even though he's not the one saying, all right, go team? Well, I think it's a few things. I think number one is his performance. He's consistently a top performer in the league every single day in practice, you know, executing at a very high level. Second, he has a relationship with everyone on the team. Joe's a guy, but you don't want to let him down. Hmm. You know, he plays so good all the time. It raises everyone's game. There's a certain level of urgency when playing with Joe that you need to be at your best because you know he's going to be. I have to ask you about the rookie show. Did the rookies deliver? Because today was the rookie show. Man. I heard there was a video prepared. How'd they do? Uh, I think they did all right. I, I think rookie shows have fallen off over the last couple of years. Um, a lot of dancing, a lot of music videos. Um, we're we're going to need more. We're going to have to have a full install on what, what to do in a rookie show, keys to success, you, that whole thing. I think we're kind of losing our way with the, you know, the Gen Zers coming in. What did, what did you do for your rookie show? Man, I did a few things. I did a full skit. Uh, I did a full skit on Joe Judge um, back go. in the day. And yeah. Actually, I went up a couple times because sometimes uh, Coach Belichick would randomly be like, hey, rookie, you know, we could get meetings off if you come and tell a joke. So I did a couple of sets up there. Uh, I, had a, I, I credited, I think it was about 10% of the reason I made the team rookie year. Is Which, because I, of the I went show. four for four up in front of the team. There we go. Yeah. All right. Did you embarrass yourself as much as me wearing shorts for this interview? I think you look good. Man. Yeah. You think? It, you think <laughs> yeah. It's... it's a hot summer day. It was the hottest day that we've had in a while. Hey, you practiced today, and look at you. Look at me. I didn't practice. <laughs> What's it like playing for Bill Belichick? Man, I have so much respect for Bill, and he gave me three opportunities to be on his team. So, very, very grateful for that. Those, those jobs. You know, you can never take that lightly. Um, you know, it was fun as a rookie to be indoctrinated into, uh, you know, to, to that culture. Obviously, they were coming off. They've been good. They had been good for 15 years <laughs> up to that point. Sure. So I felt honored to be there um, and wanted to fit in as best I could. And I ended up starting my first game in the mm -hmm. NFL. So uh, really grateful to them. Um, glad we beat them Christmas Eve last year. That was a big, big one. It got a little scary. It got a little dicey. Cause it did. I've been on the other end, other sideline mm -hmm. where we win a lot of those games, mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah. complete collapse almost of yeah. the other team but
thank goodness we held DJ Reader punching the ball out there at the end. How fulfilling were those two wins? The Patriots win and then going back to week four, the Thursday night game over Miami. I, I, all wins are just such a, you know, a release of happiness because you've obsessed over these people for seven days. Um, and it's really all we're here to do is to go out there and help the team win. But when you play your friends and when you play your former teams, I have a lot of friends on both teams. Yeah. Um, you know, playing in the league now in eight years, you have a lot of friends on all the teams. You sure. know, there's a lot of guys that you meet. It's not a very huge community. There's about 1,500 of us. But um, those two wins, yeah, those are sweet. Let's talk about the offensive line room for a little bit. Let's start with you, because why not start why not? with the center, right? Are you playing the best ball of your career right now, do you think? I hope so. I um, thought last year was pretty solid. I want to keep improving. I don't want to ever stop improving. I think that's when... If you get too, too comfortable in this league, you can't get too comfortable. There's guys sure. coming in every year. Um, this is a hard league to play in. I think so. I'd like this year to be the best. You know, I'm always looking forward to the next, and you know, this one's upon us, so we'll see. What specifically are you hoping to be better at this year than, than last year? Obviously, you have more familiarity with the guys that you're playing with, so that probably helps. Well, the cool thing about this is you know, I was on three one-year deals in a row, yeah. um, and this is the first year in the last four that I get to be in the same offense back-to-back -back years. Yeah. So a comfortability with that. I'd like to run the ball a little bit better than we did last year. Mm -hmm. I think we got a great, great scheme with Frank, uh, Brian, and uh, when Zach. I, I, you know, we just be more efficient. Obviously, we know we, we want the ball in nine's hands, but we want to stay ahead of the sticks, run the ball a little bit better, start getting, you know, over 100 yards rushing a game would be nice. Um, but I think we, you know, we protected well. I want to shut down some of the, some of the stupid mistakes that, you know, with, came with having four new old linemen. Um, and as long as we do the right thing, you know, every single time, you know, that's what Cap actually says that a lot, which I have a huge amount of respect for Alex Cap, but he's a huge pickup for us. But he says, if we just always do the right thing every single time, you know, we got guys, we got guys on the edge that are going to make huge plays. So we just, as our unit, just consistently doing the exact right thing. Can we go down the line of starters? Go down the line. All right. Yeah. What comes to mind first when you think of Jonah Williams? Jonah Williams, I think, I think he's made an unbelievable switch to right tackle. He looks very smooth. I was joking with him. I mean, it's like, are you, are you a right tackle? Because he looks incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously there was, you know, you got to look out for yourself in this business. And, the, you know, we weathered that uh, stuff. And he's come in and just been... You know, the same guy's always been working hard, out there every day, and, you know, a, a fun person to have in your culture and in your room. Well, what comes to mind with Alex Kappa? I can't think of many men that I have more respect for than Alex Kappa. I envy him in his moral direction. He knows who he is and what he's about. Obviously, he's an amazing player. He's a huge man. Um, he's perfect for this offense. He wins a ton of one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like his ticket. He... It's hard to beat Kappa one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, he's very, very smart. I, I don't think he gets enough credit for how smart he is. I, I rely on him quite a bit. We bounce things off each other about how we're going to do certain things. But having Cap on the field is like having a second center. He's, you know, and what we've tried to do this year with how we've talked to each other is to see the game through one set of eyes. We're both seeing the same thing, having the same language. That's what we're trying to build off of, being in the – same offense, second year in a row. And the other guy you've been with for a second year in a row now, it's Cordell Volson. Oh, yeah. And I think he exceeded everyone's expectations. On draft day, he gets picked, and we're like, that's the first offensive lineman you take from, you know, North Dakota yeah. State. You just, because you didn't know much about Cordell. Yeah. And starts day one, plays the most snaps. Yep. Played every snap last yeah, year. Yeah, in the line room last year. Yeah. I mean. It's hard to do. I've only done that once in my career. It's unbelievable. I've only done that once. And so what, what comes to mind when, when it's him? Because he exceeded, I think, everybody's expectations. Well, he's season. still going to be exceeding everyone's expectations. I think the biggest jump you take from year one to year two uh, in the league is year one to year two. Uh, he's a huge man. Mm -hmm. um, he, got, huge. he got even bigger and stronger and faster. I love Cordell, and I think he can be the better version of me, you know, doing, mm -hmm. all, the, doing all the right things and, you know, not having some of the roadblocks I've had early in my career. And, you know, he's just such a good person and a, a pure soul. 
and he really gets it mm -hmm. and really wants to do his best. And he's we're going to rely on him and really expecting a huge jump. And I, you know, want to help him any way I can. Last but not least, the the shock I think of free agency. What Certainly, a, what a night that was! Unbelievable, Orlando Brown Jr. Yeah, you guys add him. He's huge. You want to talk about big man? Huge guy, nicest guy it seems like ever. He's willing to talk all the time. D describe him for me. What, high energy. Yeah, for sure. High intelligence. Amazingly well spoken. Mm -hmm. If they, if you hear some of the vocabulary that comes out of him and how he can articulate a point. Um, has he had you Google? Has no, he forced no, you to I'm, Google? I've got a pretty big vocab too, but <laughs> he has been unbelievable. The way he came in, obviously that night was, uh, you know, a huge pickup. The fans were all over it, but to learn this offense as quickly as he does, the grasp he has on it already um, is unbelievable. And, you know, we've gone out a few times. He's my guy. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, he's, he's a fun time and really just a huge addition to our locker room, not only size-wise, but experience wise obviously a winner knows what it takes to win the final game and will be a big part of our franchise for many years the cincyhat.com obviously now you have polos t-shirts i wear the t-shirt my wife loves the t-shirt wears it all the time andrew behind the camera has uh multiple hats wears them all the time i've worn them at practice but they've swept cincinnati let's go back to day zero of the cincy hat if I would have told you that this is going to take Cincinnati by storm and have the impact that it had, would you have laughed? What would your reaction been? I would have not known what you're talking about because, yeah, this was this is unbelievable. I thank Cincinnati so much. The support has been unbelievable. We're actually breaking ground in a new apartment building. I, I shared that video about a month ago. We mm -hmm. finished an apartment building that has about 30 residents in it, uh, you know, strictly for for the village of Marici. But uh, it's it's unbelievable, <laughs> really, that this all took yeah. off and. Really what happened was, I think it was Cleveland, Halloween Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone, there was such a fever about these hats because no one knew where they could get them. There was yep. a couple of Instagram posts and people kept asking me like, how can I get a hat? And I remember I kind of being in a, in a sour mood and we lost to Cleveland Brown. Yeah. And I'm getting questions, you know, that Monday about these hats. So I finally had it. I was like, you know what? We're gonna sell them, but we're gonna do it for charity. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna do it for the charity that I support, the Village of Marici in Indianapolis. But my buddy Matt, since he had Matt, who runs it, um, you know, heard that and was like, are you serious? <laughs> You're not going to do this by yourself, are you? And thank goodness for him. He does an amazing job. We are closing in on a million dollars of hats sold. A million dollars. That's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's well, unbelievable. Let's talk more about Matt. Let's give Matt a yeah, little Yeah, let's shine. give Matt a little what, what does he do? I think he does everything because I communicate with him on social media. I know he's promoting. He's boxing hats, it looks like. It looks like he's doing a little bit of everything. Matt is the CEO of the Cincy Hat, and he was, you know, he's been my best friend since we were in eighth grade. His mother founded the Village of Marici. Um, but he does. He packs them for you. He responds to you. Customer services, Matt, he... Gets all the shipments out, handles inventory. Um, you know, we talk about new designs and stuff, but he really does an exceptional job. It's it's unbelievable how many hours that he's put into it. And obviously, I'm very grateful to him. And it's a it's a pretty cool business that kind of, and it does good too. So it's it's pretty it's a lot of fun to do it. I can't stress enough how grateful I am to the Cincinnati community because it is it is a lot of hats every single day that we're shipping out. And uh, Matt does a great job getting into them, but. Um, all that money is going to housing adults with developmental disabilities. It's really cool. Let's talk about Village of Marici a little bit more. Obviously, it's made a, a huge impact for the Village of Marici. You mentioned Matt's mom founded this. Yep. And so is that why it's so near and dear to your heart? Or is, is it is. Uh, so I have uh, autism. I have a few members of my family with autism. Um, and then obviously Colleen founded the village. Her first child um, is autistic and lives at the village. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty groundbreaking what they've accomplished. Even before, obviously, they had it rolling before the Cincy hat. Mm -hmm. But it's the only place, it's very unique. It's the only place in the Midwest that allows for just an independent lifestyle mm -hmm. among these adults. So, you know, we also, we provide housing. Um, you know, there's minimal rent. But they also have a fleet of about 150 to 200 coaches that work with people all around the city. And the cool thing about the village is, you know, their mission is to create independence with these individuals. And with a little bit of coaching, a little bit of support, a place to stay, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can lead very, very productive, normal, fun lives. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to have the community that they do. Uh, they're all friends. I'm friends. I'm going to go play cards with them on the bye week. But it's really, truly unbelievable. I've never met people doing more good. 
how nice is it to be so close now? Because when you were in, obviously, New England or Miami, it wouldn't have been as easy to get there. It's not. No. It, it, and so now it's a 90-minute drive. I, you know, when I signed here, I thought about that. Um, I didn't even know that that was a weight on my shoulders about how far I was away from my family mm-hmm. until it was gone. Yeah. And I'm so grateful to be in here, here in Cincinnati. I obviously grew up in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. about an hour and a half away. Uh, my family's still there. And um, dad's coaching again at Marion University in Indy. Oh. So I'm the, I'm the biggest booster. <laughs> right. I <love laughs> yeah, it. I got... We got them a fridge. We got all sorts of things. They're in the heat of camp too right now. First day of school actually today. So that's exciting. I'm excited for the guys. That was always a fun day. My sister-in-law works at Marion University. No way. Yeah. So she that. went there. She graduated from there. She's a Marion Knight? Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's so, yeah. And, and your dad's coaching there. It's a perfect segue because I wanted to talk about the family ties. It's in your blood. I've seen some interviews where you've, football wasn't forced upon you, mm-hmm. but you loved it from as far back as you can remember. Loved it. Didn't really like any other sport. Why? Ah, gosh. I, you know, I hated individual sports, like wrestling or tennis. feel like you'd be a good wrestler. Man, I wish I probably would have. I probably would have been drafted a little bit higher. But, That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't like being out there alone. I love football for a couple reasons. Um, you get to touch your opponent, which is big for me. That's why baseball was never – I would mean, be frustrated. Some guy's throwing gas. I can't hit him. But um, – <laughs> I love the – it's – football so interesting. It's just a one week of just obsessive focus, and, you, you, you know, you have your guys, your teammates, your friends and brothers, and you learn about this other team. You learn their names, how they move, what they do, and it's just a, a complete weekly obsession culminating in a win, hopefully, and I just think that's so rewarding. I, I think football is such a – it's helped me so much in my life. It's such a clear goal, the clarity that football provides in my life. We're going to go win a game. Is something very valuable to me. When did you, throughout your career, think the NFL was a realistic option? It was probably always a goal where you, you were like, I want to be a, a pro football player. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. I really just wanted to play in the Big Ten. I think probably going into senior year of college. But, I mean, I was coming off an ACL, so I was just going to ride that, that year out and, you know, try to, try to be as best as I can, and it worked out. But it wasn't like I wasn't, you know – I, I, I guess I never had the vision of playing in the NFL. I really, my whole childhood goal was to play in the Big Ten or just get a football scholarship sure. to pay for my education. Just to be in the club of my family. There's seven of them. It's a lot of seventh, pressure. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to have Joe Burrow back. He's ready to go. I think Jamar looks like he's just even better. Sometimes it might yeah. be harder to tell because we haven't seen him in preseason games yeah. and stuff, but certainly in practice. T. Higgins, bigger, stronger, probably just as fast, but. We saw him high point of ball today in practice. Like, we know what Tyler Boyd is. We know what those other receivers are. I think this offense, I, I don't really see the weakness. I know you got to go out there and prove it. But is, the, is that how you guys view it? Is you have all the talent to, to have the 100-plus yards rushing every, get, every game, get the downfield shots to your weapons, all of those things? Yeah. But like I said earlier, um, you know, we, each man can only play one position. And our unit – there's a lot of onus on us to, to make it go, and, and we take that very seriously. But, yeah, we want to go out and score as many points as we can. That's what we're out to do. We're out there to score, and we have the guys to do it. But we need to go prove it. You know, it's not a simulation. It's not, you're not yeah. just simming the game in Madden. Yeah. You know, you got to go out and be psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and mentally ready to play a football game, and that's, you know, a big deal. You've uh, certainly had, I think – your fair share of offensive linemen over. Yes. Your, your house, just for mm-hmm. team bonding and things like oh, that. Yeah. Who's the most fun hang in that room? And it doesn't have to be one of the starters that we covered. Well, I've hung with Cordell the most. Okay. Um, but o- o- OB is the most fun hang. Yeah. Me, me, is he? Me and OB get after it. So. Why is he? What makes him? Well, he matches my energy. Not a lot of guys can, especially when, yeah, there's libations involved. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gotten Joe Burrow to show up? Oh yeah, to one of you. Okay. Oh, Joe's the man. Joe, oh, I'll show. Okay, Joe's the man. Dude. Everyone yeah. talks about how he just oh, likes to go home, Joe. and that's it. So he'll come over to the Heck system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you're the center. I think he, I've seen him at multiple people's spots. So okay. he, yeah, Joe's Joe's out here hanging with the guys. I don't think you know he can't go to MLTs with us. You know that would be a mess. But <laughs> if we're yeah. just hanging in someone's backyard, he'll be there. Yeah. Expectations are high. Year two for you in Cincinnati, 20-0 and 0 is the goal. But 
we'll see, right? You know how these things go. That said, what do you think it would feel, or how do you think it would feel to win a ring here? There's never been a Super Bowl champion in, in Cincinnati versus New England. They, they were used to it for a while. And I know it's still valuable and it matters a ton and you have two, but what do you think it would, would mean? I think it would mean the world. That's, to be world champions in Cincinnati, uh, you know, someone's going to do it, so I want it to be us. Hopefully, hopefully that happens. The CincyHat.com, make sure you go there and you're working with a legend, Ken Anderson. Absolutely. there in the Bengals Ring of Honor. What do you have coming up? Be on the lookout. We're going to do a shirt and have an event. We're going to do a T-shirt um, with me in my current Bengals uniform snapping to Ken in the old oh. script Bengals helmet. Um, Ken Anderson, the Anderson Alliance, uh, has the same mission as the Village Marici, and this is going to benefit bringing a Marici-style building and living community here to Cincinnati. So we're kind of merging our two two causes, um, and, and it's really awesome. Ken's, Ken's an amazing man, uh, obviously a legend, Bengal, and it's, it's a lot. Of, I'm honored to, you know, be working with him. We will share, obviously, the details for the event, and uh, I know that there might be some Ken Anderson giveaways in the future, so make sure you stay tuned there. Ted, this was awesome. Good luck this season. I'm sure we'll be bothering you soon, but thanks. thanks. So much, Appreciate you, man. Yep.